crackle paste moon terrain bases in various stages of completion on these roughly 1 to 32 scale plastic spaceman figures. That one's almost done. Uh, nice. Uh, and I'm trying to combine with a micaceous iron oxide there. Uh, these back here, I, I want to use the glass bead gel to make it look like we're made by jewelers by adding a little bit of uh, light interference colors. We can get these sort of effects over here on these two figures, which are copies of Matchbox. Figures a little bit below 1 to 32 scale. I'm not happy with their uniforms, but I'm very pleased with how their space terrain turned out. Going for sort of a trying to do a little major Matt Mason homage there with that figure. And I, I think I'm going to have to make his visor yellow to hopefully draw the conclusion. This figure here by Timmy Toys, that's almost finished. He's about ready to go. And these are either just underway or I'm doing other things with them. None of these are finished. That web's nice. Ajax copy and my little mini Barbies that I'm trying to touch up nice to me. Air Force dude, somebody cut his face out. He's like, ah! 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 Palmer from the thing. And and I, I use a metallic paint as, as a base layer because the jagged little bits of solids in, in, in the metallic colors adhere better to the smooth plastic surface. Although everything has to be sprayed repeatedly and almost obsessively, you'll usually get, you know, half a dozen little wisps of, of uh, a fixative or a clear spray acrylic that I also use. This guy I just started, he's a LP Toys copy. Uh, in yellow, and he's got this interesting sort of inner glow from it that I think I'm going to leave. I'm not going to make his suit any denser and just detail it from there. He, see, he's one of the rare figures that will not get like the orange coloring, uh, which is which is from a Tie Fighter pilot costumes. I'll admit it now, as the idea has become more solid. In, in, in what I'm trying to get at here with that orange color. Here's a Hing Fat Toys, early Hing Fat Toys, as opposed to a later. The earlier ones had the rectangular chest boxes and tend to be made of a stiff or soft plastic. The more recent ones have a plain circular feature in the middle of their chest uh, and tend to be made in a, in a hard plastic. But this guy came to me with his uh, hand chopped off, so now he's using a uh, Ziploc bag slider as sort of a, a, a prosthetic accoutrement, sort of cyborg attachment that performs some sort of function. There's another hang fat, uh, obviously in, in yellow, uh, much, much lighter. Uh, but the figure in the middle... Mm early 1970s and it may not have been made by Hing Fat. Somebody, uh, Hing Fat may have took the line up from somebody else and that could explain why the, the design features very subtly changed at some point. Let's see if we can get that good dramatic underside look here. I'll figure out how to flip it in editing. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually very pleased with him as he is just like that with his gray poking through. It makes the suit look like it's worn and, and, and dirty and he's on the moon or something like that up to some fascinating activity. And I'm trying to treat this, I'm not trying to paint miniatures, I'm trying to treat the surface as as I would any, any surface that I paint on and instead use the methods that I developed of accreting different layers of, of, of pigment and, and material and effects gels over time and let them become something new. I'll insert this too and then the figures go into the little uh, box paintings. 
along with, with some sort of accoutrement that doesn't cover up my nice painting. Which is why the Crimson Clipper is, is a little bit too big to go in there with a figure. I want the I want specifically want figures in these boxes. It's not just random stuff. And I figured as long as I'm using them, they should be figures that I've manipulated and regarding their, the surfaces I would any other component of the art that I'm making. Which is how I like to work. It's all or nothing with me, dude. And once the bottle's uncorked, there's, there's no, no turning back. Final 